It's a new era for Major League Rugby in the Crescent City as the NOLA goal begins play at their new home, the Gold Mine, at the Shrine on Airline. After a solid 2019 campaign that saw the goal become the top scoring team in the league, NOLA will look to build on that success in 2020. Today, Old Glory DC comes to the Big Easy, looking to make their presence known in the franchise's inaugural season. Major League Rugby, straight ahead. Old Glory DC and NOLA Gold, coming up next on CST. From the Shrine on Airline in New Orleans, Louisiana, Cox Sports Television is proud to present NOLA Gold Rugby. Today, the NOLA Gold take on Old Glory DC. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a gorgeous day in the Crescent City. It's absolutely beautiful today, but it's also the beginning of the third season of Major League Rugby and NOLA Gold as well. Hey, but it's also the very first match for this new franchise, Old Glory DC, a proud rugby tradition in Washington. But it's also an historic day for us here in New Orleans because the Gold finally move in to their 10,000-seat stadium. We call it the Gold Mine at the Shrine on Airline. We're going to eventually call it the Gold Mine on Airline, but it's very beautiful, and we can't wait to move eight straight home games and hopefully a couple playoff games as well. But we also got to talk about the actual game itself because let's talk about the two teams playing, the NOLA Gold. We know this is the building blocks of success. It's the keys to the game, and we're going to take a look at Legacy Industries' building blocks of success. Here are the keys. Let's talk about the NOLA Gold, Ian. Capitalize on cohesion, Scott. This is a team with a lot of experience together. That's their advantage in today's matchup. Get that ball from the forwards to the devastating backs and recover and respond. Old Glory's new, but they got some playmakers. They're going to do some damage out there. NOLA Gold has to recover and respond. Hey, Jeff Ormsby, tell us a little bit about what's going to take for Old Glory to get this match in the W Cup. Yeah, they got to win their set pieces, lineouts, and scrums. They've had some trouble with those at the exhibition games they've played. Also, they've got some big, big centers. If they can control the middle of the field and get their ball wide in space. It's going to be trouble for New Orleans on the outside defense. It's going to be fun. It's beautiful today. Hey, listen, Noah Gold going for the playoffs for the first time. They fell short last year. Hey, the Gold Glory DC just wants to get there in their first year. Hey, coming up next, we have Noah Gold Rugby on Cox Sports Television. Noah Gold Rugby on Cox Sports Television is brought to you by Rob's AC, the official heating and air conditioning company of the Noah Gold. Mention the NOLA Gold next time you need a unit service for a 10% discount. Tulane Institute of Sports Medicine, the official health care provider of the NOLA Gold. Also by Rhino Rugby, the official ball and equipment provider of Major League Rugby. And by Cox, true fans watch together, celebrate together, and sometimes even witness history together. Cox gets you closer to the teams you love. Cox, bringing us closer. And welcome to NOLA Gold Rugby. We're at the Gold Mine at the Shrine on Airline for the opening day in the history of this stadium with the NOLA Gold. Hey, let's, hey, let's take a look at Rob's AC starting lineup. Hey, the NOLA Gold, the key here are the four new starters that everyone's been talking about. Dino Waldron at the tight head prop. Carl Meyer, the big 6'3", 235-pound South African. Also, Robbie Coleman from Australia and Julian Dominguez from Argentina. Look out for those guys. And as far as the Rob's AC starting lineups for Old Glory, Jake Turnbull, he's got a brother on the gold, and this team's going to be loaded. Mungo Mason is a guy you want to look out for in this match. Threaten Palamo hurt the goal last season when he played for Houston, but all of these guys can play, and most of them are established veterans. And as far as the reserves, this year, the goal decided to put a couple of their starters in the reserves to stay strong at the end. Nik Nikola Versic is the main guy there that you want to see at the very end. And the coaches, Nate Osborne, the Aust Australian, his third season as the head coach of the gold. And, of course, Andrew Douglas, the new hire as head coach for, for the Old Glory DC. This guy is somebody they've been looking forward to ever since they hired him just a few months back. It's going to be a great game. Looking forward to it. And the kickoff is coming up soon. So, guys, I'm with Jeff Ormsby and, of course, Ian McNulty, who was here with me last year. You guys take over. Let's talk about what you think that the gold needs to do to win this game. And the same thing for Old Glory. First of all, Scott, can I just say how exciting it is to be here at kickoff for this game. Here we are, another season upon us, and we are off. Gold takes it, uh, and they're driving right now. They're still 
working through some of their first phases, kicking it away, looking like they're going to take another look at how Old Glory can come at them. Again, in opening phases of this game here, both teams feeling each other out, seeing how things are going to line up, looking for that first opportunity. As sometimes people watching at home, uh, new to rugby, want to know, why are they kicking it away? Why are they kicking it away so much? Well, That's a good question, actually. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're angling for position, much like you see in soccer sometimes. You know, you, they're, they're kicking it uh, to see if they can create an opportunity downfield, trading space for possession. That's crafty there. Little chip kick over the top and recovered it. Got to get him down to the ground here. Step back. His first phase is here, so interesting. Both teams trying to see, probing for weaknesses, watching to see what the other team's strengths are too. Calibrations going on in the coaches' heads constantly. As we see our first glimpses of Old Glory DC in their debut game for the league. And that's the guy we just talked about, Mungo Mason, number seven. Yeah, this could now. be trouble here. Oh, oh, bad pass out wide. They had space. Old Glory really threatening there. Looked like they had something, uh, but that just that, that last that last pass uh, didn't work out quite so well for them. And you can see how fast things can flip around in this game. Uh, Jeff, as you pointed out, they, they looked like they had a little momentum going there. Looked a little scary in the corner for Nola Gold. Yeah, uh, probably got lucky. Yeah, I mean, you can see that they create space on this loop ball here. Uh, looks like the number eight. If they had a back out there, maybe been a little softer, a little easier pass, but. They had a, a three-on-one opportunity they just didn't execute. Great, and uh, great kick on they're the going to need to do that. Right off the fingertips there. But that brings up our first set piece, our first line out, of course, getting the ball back into play yeah. after it was kicked for touch, only. kicked out of bounds. Everyone with you, please. ball. Yeah, this is a real good tacking ball here for New Orleans. They could probably come down quick with this and get it out. Uh, so, it's all right. Are you Pelicans and Wizards fans not... Used to rugby yet, the, the line-out is similar to a jump ball, basically getting the ball back in play. Of course, one of our two set pieces of the game of rugby, the other being the scrum. Again, just getting the ball moving again, starting things over. Uh, an opportunity for both teams. No advantage, you can come back, Bill, knock on that line-out. Next week. Well, next te telecast on CST, excuse me, the Colorado Raptors versus the NOLA Gold. Hey, that's se Saturday, February 22nd. That is going to be up there in Glendale, and that's on Major League Rugby on CST. Live coverage begins at 5 p.m. Central for the full broadcast schedule. Visit CoxSportsTV.com. And, okay, my favorite play of the game here, Scott and Jeff, as you know well, the scrum. Yeah, and DC's had some, as I said in the uh, intro, DC's had some issues with their scrum in their exhibition matches. So uh, New Orleans just looking to secure this ball, come back quickly. Of course, the signature set piece of there we rugby go. is the scrum. A little scrum. slow, get some space down uh, wide. Tim Tim a little space. There we go. And you want to recycle this ball real quick because you've got DC on their back foot. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Now you see here very similar situation that uh, that just be beleaguered Old Glory when they were in Nola Gold's backyard. Uh, ball was moving well, but and that one one phase off. By the way, that is Malcolm May, the nephew of Mark May, the great Redskin. But here, the Old Glory home opener is next Sunday at Cardinal Stadium on the campus of Catholic University. Convenient metro access and plenty of parking. Go to Old Glory DC and purchase your tickets. And I mentioned Mark May because he was part of the great Hogs in Washington. And obviously we're playing a team in Washington back in the 80s when they were winning Super Bowls back in the day. That's been a long time, but his nephew, Malcolm, is one of the key players now for the NOLA goal. Yeah, Malcolm, uh, he needs to catch that football there, though. I mean, they had that DC on their back foot, and that's a really good it's a scrum penalty here for Wheeling. Uh, going to go to DC I'm going to give Malcolm a break. He's missed two complete seasons with Achilles injuries, yeah. and uh, this is his first time touching a ball in regular play, so yeah. we'll give him a hard time the oh, next yeah. time he does it. I know. It's well, just, it's just you got a good break there uh, from Timmy Maupin, and you've got DC on their back foot, and that's a ball you got to exploit. Quick ball out from Holden, and uh, that's trouble if, if Malcolm makes that catch there and brings it in. It looked that they had a lot of space out wide. 
Well, Jens, remember, we're a few minutes into uh, the first so game. I think we may be seeing a little bit of jitters. We could mark that up uh, for both teams here. They've both been in attacking positions, and those those assaults were undone uh, by just missed miss, miss balls and slightly off passes. When those things click, it's a thing of beauty, and I think hopefully we're going to start seeing some of these drives come together for these teams, see if they can really stitch together a yeah. prolonged attack. So uh, the overthrow there by DC taken by New Orleans. We look to soften, the, oh, they're going wide here. Oh, they got some space out here with Julian Dominguez. Yeah. This is a huge pickup for the goal. Dominguez coming from Argentina and just got in last now, night. Now they want to move it. They got, they got some numbers wide. That's what they're going to do here. That's pretty. Con Foley with the kick, the Olympian from Australia. We're seeing some nice aggressive play here, though. That uh, that run by Dominguez, probably one of the, the big breaks so far in the game for the gold. That's well spotted by Robbie Coleman. Okay. Nice physical run. Stay there. Yeah. Now what you're seeing here, guys, of course, is the forwards taking it in, doing those crash balls, giving their backs a little time to get set up. In that case, they wanted to kick it away again, trading space uh, for possession. Nice. Good, good feet now. This is a good, good ball to use here. Pretty but, uh, unfortunate knock on there. Of course, that hit very hard Bobby and Trover! ball pops out. Anyone's ball right now. Nice pickup. Gold manages to come up with it under high pressure. Of course, back to the wall now. He's got the ball, play on. Looks like DC stole the ball. It. That's right. They, uh, oh, beauty. There you go, Cam Dolan down the field. The big six foot five World Cup player from America. Very aggressive play by Old Glory. I like the way they're playing right yeah, now. That's a great kick from Scotty. Scotty Gale saw that it, they weren't, they didn't have the numbers out wide. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, play on, play on. I'm going to warn him. So many good phases we just witnessed there. Nice move there, right there. Look at him. He's going. He's turning around. Nice tackle. No, he's still going. He pulls him over. Great run right there. Play on. But Nola Gold just flipped the script right there. Got the ball way across the pitch. And then, of course, uh, Old Glory, you see the speed at which they responded going back to that field. Yeah, what a great run by it right there. Hey, by the way, stay connected with CST Online. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and please visit our website, CoxSportsTV.com. For the latest sports news and information, find out more about CST programming and check out our broadcast schedule. Hey, you can also watch exclusive videos on our YouTube channel. Log on today. Let's recognize our ref, Luke Rogan. So far, he's uh, been letting him, letting him play pretty, uh, pretty, pretty free and loose. Of course, in rugby, the referee, you see the one official out there, in the center of the action. So much depending on his interpretation and, and feel of the, of the laws down. and the, the play the in front of him. Six on the middle, step across. One of the defining features of rugby is the authority vested in the one official on the field there. Terrific line out. Nice. Very fast recycling of that. Moving it through. Lost now. The slow ball here, just going to punch it up, reset the next ball. Probably another alpha here, which is a, a just a short ball to the forwards to set up the next phase. Let me see what they're doing there, taking their time. Got a penalty here. So basically, the DC player didn't release the tackle player. Once the uh, New Orleans player hits the ground, the DC tackler must release the player. Didn't do it there. It's a shot in front of the post if they want it, but it looks like they're going to go for a uh, driving ball here, Ian. Yeah, you see, they had a they had a, a perfect opportunity to try for three right there, which uh, could have been a chip shot. I have a great quote from our GM Ryan Fitzgerald. He says, "I love our coach. He rarely goes for threes. He wants to get the big home run each and every time." Hey, by the way, LSU Tigers, you know they're coming up in all sports, but CST brings you the most coverage of your LSU Tigers. Here's a look at next week's schedule, which includes the LSU men's and women's basketball radio shows. Tiger Tracks and Tiger Rag Television and Inside Look at Basketball and Gymnastics. For more information, of course, visit CoxSportsTV.com. Yeah, New Orleans 
very close here. They look like the ball came, they look like they're pulling down the mall here. Yep. He's got DC for pulling down the mall, the penalty. Um, looks like New Orleans had a really good platform there, Ian. It looks like they were going to drive that ball over for a try. I'm a little bit concerned that the ref didn't give him the penalty try. Yes, of course, so uh, something like that. Watching for uh, Mr. Rogan to lay down the law here. Yeah. I mean, DC's it's a couple of penalties in a row, Ian, and uh, they're going to do it again. The, reduc the line out redux yeah. here. Hey. See, what we, what we saw before no, was from the line out, the like took He's the ball like and it. formed yeah. a mall, Let's which is, dream. if you've been watching the rucks, the mall is basically a ruck, but on your feet, it keeps moving, it keeps marching. And if, when you're this close to the opponent's try line, it can be a deadly tactic. Looks like that's exactly what they're trying to do again. Yeah, they got to, they got to, he's got to get to his feet. Uh, balls out, balls balls away, out now, so they've balls lost their away. shape. Yeah, not a good one there, Ian. Look at Dominguez. Yeah. He's strong and fast. He'll run through you as well as around you. He's carrying the ball along with him. Now what we're going to see here. Oh. Moving forward. Okay. It's going to be scrum down to New Orleans here because the ball is moving forward. This is scrum, Kyle. Too many this people is scrum. To scrum. Going forward. Scrum. So, Jeff, at this point, look how close they are to Old Glory's try line. Interesting opportunities here. From a scrum, if you can, you can march that a little closer, or you can get it out fast and put it in the hands of your speedy backs. I know there was a lot of eagerness from folks in D.C. and around the league about Tendai Matawari, Ria? Excuse me, I think I got that right. Matawari, the, the, the Beast, that's who he's called, the Beast. He was supposed to be here, but he had some visa issues. We'll talk more about him later, but here's the scrum for the gold. And yeah, and again, like I said in the intro, they've had some issues with their scrum. Let's see if New Orleans can walk this one over, Ian. The crowd is behind them. They're chanting Nola, Nola from the stands. Their cadence for the scrum. Old and younger. Yeah, there the you go. There you go. Are marching. Here we go. New Orleans is marching. Looks like that's going to pop out. And down. And it looks like yeah. a try. Cam Dolan with the first try of the season for the Nola Gold. There it is, boys. That is the inaugural try for this venue, too, here at the gold mine at the Shrine on Airline. And what a, what a perfect person to do. A two-time oh, World Cup player representing the United the States at the number eight position. Cam Dolan gets the first try right here, like you said, in the yeah, gold mine at the, the Shrine yeah. on Airline. Persistence rewarded for the NOLA gold, too. You saw the mall in the very beginning yeah, that looked it like angles, it could yeah, be a winner. Yeah. That was brought yeah. down. A couple yeah, more penalties just yeah. kept them in business yeah. right around there. They had to try a few yeah. different ways, but eventually uh, the old-fashioned yeah, way. <laughs> boards up front, marching that scrum in, pick up the ball, dot it down, try and, rewarded. And this should also be, if I'm not mistaken, the first kick for the new kicker. Obviously, he comes from South yeah, Africa. Big, Carl uh, Meyer, I talked about him earlier in the open, six foot three, 235. He actually kicks the ball 70 meters with regularity. Uh, last year, obviously, J.P. Eloff did it, but Meyer has a little more distance, so he's getting the, the call from the beginning of the season right now. And these two points are, are very crucial. And unlike football, where it's right there in the middle, you go in the angle where you score, and he knocks it through. He might have knocked that one 70 because it looks like it's on Airline Highway. He hit the Budweiser beer sign out there and says, they're our sponsor. We'll go ahead and say that. Fantastic. He, he just uh, gave a toast to that uh, gigantic pint of Budweiser out there. Uh, yes, yeah, so, of course, very known for the the, the, uh, the length of, the, of his kicks. Uh, that one was an accuracy kick. Of course, he had to kick it from right where the try was called. Rugby, another little nuance for our new watchers out there. Uh, it's basically to... like the touchdown if this is your first time watching. Full of gold attacking again. Picks it up nicely on the kickoff. So they're gonna they're gonna look to exit here, Ian. You can see it right here. He's, he's setting up his Take Carl Meyer. And Carl's got a massive a massive pink as well. Um, but that's gonna have to come back because they brought that back ball back into the 22. And uh, that's a no-no. So uh, you can't kick the ball straight out from your 22. And so now the lineout's kind of come back right where Carl struck the ball. And that's problematic for back New here, Orleans. Oh, oh, oh. Folks watching who uh, maybe questions about the kicking game. What, uh, what he was going for there was to have that ball bounce ideally right in front of the out-of-bounds line, right in front of touch, and then go out. Fortunately for the gold, it went directly out, which essentially negates the kick. Didn't quite work out nice. as they planned. Yeah, so uh, the line-out throw wasn't straight. You, the throw must go down the tunnel 
more or less, and you can kind of put it off the, the inside shoulder a bit, but once you go past the center line of that, go that past the center line, yeah, see, that wasn't straight there. It was on his outside shoulder, and that's a, that's a gonna be a free kick here for uh, or a choice for New Orleans, a scrum or a line out, and they're gonna go with a scrum. Yeah, yeah perfect. Hello. Of course, from the scrum, they'll keep the ball and have a few more options of what to do with it. Run it if they like what they see, or they can still kick it. Of course, they have to win it first. One of the things about rugby, there are no free rides. There are no free possessions. Yeah, I think, what, you, I think what you'll see here, Ian, is it looks like they may try to just to do a strike to Khan in the middle. Yeah, see, that's, New Orleans scrum's just dominating them right now. And there's the penalty right there. So basically, once DC, their scrum becomes unbound, um, there's a penalty. So you can see the dominance in the scrum. Ian, you're a scrummager. I'm a, I'm a scrum half, so I'm at the back controlling that scrum. But uh, you can just see it right now, what's coming to uh, fruition and what we said earlier in the program. What we've been witnessing in the scrums here is not normal, by the yeah, way. Uh, yeah. Usually, these the, the packs are, are pretty pretty evenly yeah, this matched. You don't see that quite that much marching and movement. Yeah. Right, and, and and you got to think New Orleans is any chance they have here to take a scrum, they're going to do it because you know they're they're just no they're, uh, no offense well, to this new team, they're brutalizing that. Has scrum. Dino Waldron yeah. been that big for us so far? The yeah. Last year, towards the end of the season, obviously the the, the team was weren't winning many scrums, so. Obviously, that's a big addition. Yeah, I mean, it is. You got two big second rows behind him and two very seasoned second rows in Kyle Bailey and Ignacio Dote. And, uh, oh, that's oh, a nice pickoff there. Yeah, that's a good move by Great turn. Karen Hearn, the Canadian, got the pick and passed it off. Old Glory has a strong opportunity here. They caught New Orleans. They, they Gordon up Fullerton bringing right through the pack. Tackle! White. Now they got a release. Well, Glory has been here before, undone by bad plays. Let's see if they can stitch one together. He's got some numbers out here in the left. Oh, step back inside. He's... Yeah, he went through the gap. That was so basically, it's an, that's an obstruction there that the, uh, the little 10 has. Little extracurricular activity. Two of the players yeah. were uh, uh, showing their emotions there, just kind of yeah. expressing their excitement no, about being on the pitch gone. again. I think but they'll not, be hugging not, it out and having a beer after the game. Yeah, That's absolutely. what they do in rugby. Yeah. Not surprisingly, it's uh, Holden Younger, uh, you know. <laughs> the feisty one. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he's, that's what a nine, that's what you want out of your nine. Your nine is uh, needs to be a little, little chirpy, a little chippy, and a little crafty. And he's all three. Uh, great player. And, uh, brings a good attitude to the field. Though, looks like Nola Gold bailed out of a potentially dangerous situation by yet another penalty. Uh, said earlier, uh, going, ref uh, going, Luke Rogan has been calling these, le le letting some stuff go for sure, but uh, Old Glory has, has definitely dinged themselves a few times when they had opportunities. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I said this last year, I have a, a New Orleans likes to pass that ball flat at the line and if that, they jump that line, it's problematic. You saw um, that ball right there get picked off. And New Orleans has got to be careful of that. Look at Mungo Mason. He's got some He's got some burst to him. Speaking of opportunities, here's Old Glory with another one. Oh, looks like not. it was off the fingertips, though. They, they were able to take that ball away from New Orleans yeah. in the line out. Looks like they had a chance to set up a good attack, but it was a... a yeah, they're going to get the New Orleans for the first knock uh, at the line out. Yeah. So it's going to be a scrum down to D.C. Scrum. Uh, yeah, New Orleans is usually pretty solid on their lineouts. I don't, I don't know what's going on. It's, uh, they're not making, not coming down cleanly with the ball. We see how important these set pieces are, Jeff. You know, the, the big breaks, the, 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 the great jukes the, on the way to a try. That's the, that's the exciting stuff in rugby. But you can't get there without a good set piece. Oh, yeah, you have to sure. win possession of the ball. You have to have your lineouts clean, and you have to have your scrums strong. So far, we've seen some great scrummaging. Lineouts probably going to be a matter for attention. Five. Yeah, which which is strange because New Orleans is very very good in their lineups and they they have they don't have any changes yeah, in that regard. You, know, you still have Eric Howard throwing the football down. in and Kyle Bailey and Cam Dolan jumping. It's you early, know. guys. Yeah. Hey, they weren't very good in the scrums last year. Now they're better, uh, and they they switched it up with the lineups. What's well, been so interesting, Scott, uh, to to be part of this new league? 
Old Glory, this is their very first game in the league. For Nola Gold, it's only the third season. Everything is so new, everything is so young. That's why it's so exciting to be part of this, for people at home watching, for people in the stands to come out for these things. This is so many we're, we're seeing the players set. on both teams, though. I've been impressed with reading the resumes of, Ouch. obviously, Old Glory and the players that they brought in. Yeah, there's another scrum penalty to New Orleans. Wow. As Jeff pointed out, uh, the scrums have definitely been going the, the way for NOLA. I think they're going to try to pick up any scrum that they can now. That's going to be their preferred set. Yeah, so what you'll see here is you see the, the, the tight head push there. I mean, Dino Waldron's just walking. I mean, Dino Waldron's just walking uh, the loose head back for, for Washington. Not real pretty if you if you know scrumming. Not an easy thing to do. I mean, we were no. talking about eight men, <laughs> the biggest men on the pitch yeah. for either side. They're bound together as tight as they possibly can be to amplify their strength. Think about uh, uh, the phalanx of a Roman legion, you know, these two coming together uh, forces. Uh, and it normally uh, what you see is a little push and shove there and getting the ball around, having a lot of penalties, a lot of, uh, of one-sidedness in the scrums as well. So this is what we have in rugby, one minute hydration breaks on both in both halves, Cuisine Solutions. Cuisine Solutions is proud to be the title sponsor of Old Glory DC and support the rugby community. Hey, they're based in Sterling, Virginia. Cuisine Solutions provides high quality sous vide, cooked products to more than 22,000 restaurants, as well as first in business class on the top 10 airlines in the world, cruise ships and major hotels. Visit www.mycuisinesolutions.com for an online store, recipe ideas, and to find out more about our rugby partner, Cuisine Solutions. Hey, this copyrighted telecast of Nola Gold Rugby may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, reproduced, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of Cox Sports Television, the Nola Gold, and Major League Rugby. We always love to get that one in each and every game. So what's happening right now is uh, just a water break at the 20-minute mark, about a quarter of the way through the game here. Uh, and I have, a, I have a feeling that uh, it's probably a good time for fans and people watching to take a little water break, too. There's been some good partying uh, around here at our new venue. Uh, the tailgating scene was strong in the parking lot, and I uh, see a lot, of, a lot of fans partying in the stands here. Of course, socializing is a huge part of rugby, big part of the, the fan experience, big part of the of uh, in and set. We'll turn what it means to on. be uh, in and part set. of the we'll rugby community on. is getting together with no, people no, you no. share this passion with and, right. and sharing Don't it with newcomers, off. which is, again, why it's so exciting to have this venue. It's a great open door for people new to the sport, curious sports lovers in general to come on out and be part of this in its early days. And this drive coming from the line out, Nola Gold putting it through hands. Yeah, this going to... Not much out there. It's good, Robbie Coleman. Good play for on, play on. Now, if they recycle the ball quickly back, uh, a little slow there. By the way, Robbie oh, Coleman, we haven't talked much about him, the Super Rugby player from Australia. A big pickup for the goal in the offseason. Oh, look here, this guy. There's some stuff brewing. Yeah, this is the Raider play that they like. It's just got pick and go. You're going to keep picking and going towards the goal post. Keep picking and going and sucking in defenders. And eventually, you may do a little pop and hopefully score. Here we go. So now you have numbers here. Nice defense, though, right there yeah. by Old Glory. Yeah, not they enough. Pick that up. Still got numbers wide if Holden can get it out quickly. Got a penalty here. Right. Great response no, no. from Old Glory oh, there when it looked like it could have been yeah, a walk-in try. Yeah, they weren't going to let that happen. That's that's what we used to call in the olden days a fringe, uh, where a guy fringes off the ruck and hits the nine. And that's one of the things that is, you know, one of, very dangerous to a, to a, to a scrum half. Yeah. I didn't see a punch. I haven't got anything from the... So the nine is very, very vulnerable in that position. And uh, in the olden days, if you fringed and hit your nine like that, it usually ended up in some fisticuffs. And that's what actually happened here. Yeah, we've seen a few outbursts. Rogan hey, Jeff, it down. you mentioned the olden days. How old are we talking about? What are the olden days you're talking about? Were you played or back in the 1800s? That, well, the, in, when I played, if a guy fringed and hit your scrum half like that, the guy expected to get kind of a little knock in the head. And that's what you saw here. I think uh, either Ignacio, uh, I believe Ignacio went out for someone there. And you can see, like, Holden is a very vulnerable position there as he's break, going down for the football. He's not expecting a guy to come off the fringe and hit him. 
balls. And uh, you know, it's a really dangerous play when you friend, when you when you hit someone off the fringe like that. If he's coming off the field, this is a big hit because Scotty Gale is the other scrum half, but he's playing fly half today because they have some injuries. JP Eloff and Nick Feeks are obviously guys that are playing those positions and they're out, so they had to scramble around. Nobody scrambles them better than than head coach. Nate Osborne, though, he yeah. takes risks that other coaches wouldn't by putting players in positions that they normally don't play. Yeah, but it's it's interesting. I mean, Scott Gale never played uh, fl fly half until he came here last year. Scott's a nine. He was a nine in Australia, nine in Japan. Robbie Coleman is best at 10, played for the Brumbies at 10. Um, and he's playing 15 today because JP loves that. And now he bumps up to 10. Scotty bumps to nine, which is their, their normal positions. The real feel-good story here is, I, I believe, I think Ross yeah, Deppershmidt has come on into the, into the centers. Yeah. What a story that is, if that's the case. Yeah, I do see Ross out there. Ross is a guy uh, two years ago paid 50 bucks to come to the NOLA Gold Academy. To try out, basically. Yeah, just try out and uh, look at him. He's on the field He's on the field right now. Great guy, masters in engineering, smart guy, good rugby player. Come on, that's what Major League Rugby is all about right now. It's opportunity. Opportunity for, uh, for new talent, opportunity for Gentlemen from overseas, opportunity for talent By the from way, the backyard. He's yeah. also fit, got quick feet, very skillful, and he's a great defender in space. Oh, yeah. So he's come a long way. I played against him in the fall. He, he hit me a couple of times. He's not afraid to help out in the uh, local Set. rugby community here and plays in the, the Robert Markell Cup and uh, just, a, just a solid guy. And I'm, I'm ecstatic for him. Here's the scrum again. Here's New Orleans. They're going to. Hold their shape. Well, Dino's popped up. Oh, oh Dolan gets it again. Oh, it looked like he, he gets a nice it. tackle by Hill Glory. Look at Robbie. Look at Stop just short. Malcolm May. And Malcolm May. But the second effort will do it. Malcolm There's May. the try. By the way, once again, that is the old hawk from the Redskins, Mark May's nephew, Malcolm May, with his first score in his career with the gold. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. We're seeing a lot of firsts here today. This is excellent, uh, excellent to be part of. Uh, of course, things have been going New Orleans way thus far. Uh, that, that second try. What do we see yet again? Start from a scrum, keep pounding away, don't give up on the play, and eventually find the gap. And yeah. all it takes is, is, is one man and a, an inch and enough of space. Yeah, but if you look at that, like the ball squirted out, Ian. It wasn't really set well, or maybe a foot got in there, but it squirted out, and Malcolm was uh, cognizant enough to see that ball squirt out. It looked like it looked like Monty uh, Tongahua was going to pick, and Malcolm was going to bull rush him through. But uh, the ball squirted it out, and Malcolm very cleverly saw it and picked it up and went over by himself. By the way, Malcolm, we know the story. Torn Achilles right before the season. Uh, Big things were expected last year, and there's a, there's the the conversion. You watch it here, Ian. It just kind of squirts out. It's like a hand in there or something. See? That's right. Yeah. It's a, Malcolm smartly in just great body position, just stays low and snails across the try line. Sometimes what five, six forwards working in cohesion together can't quite do one person on with good rugby intuition can do in a second yeah he's a he's a you know penn state guy um played at a high level there great guy like like scott said had a pretty bad injury and just stuck it out down here in new orleans could have gone home or played for someone else but uh you know there's a couple other penn state guys on on i've seen oh, yeah uh, on the old oh, glory jack mclean being one of them we know all about him and then there we go. Hey, don't miss the LHSAA Girls and Bas Boys Basketball Championships right here on CST. Catch the girls' matches on March 6th and 7th, and the boys the following weekend on the 13th and 14th. Stay logged in on to CoxSportsTV.com for game announcements and times as CST brings you the All-State Sugar Bowl LHSAA Girls and Boys March Madness. Those are the playoffs for all you out there that are not familiar with high school basketball here in Louisiana. Okay, so two tries so far, both for Nola, but look up for Old Glory. They have the ball, and they're attacking again. Yeah, not really attacking. Behind, I mean, behind, Karen Hurd got that ball just completely like a statue. Uh, it's okay. This is going to be edge. shut down. Yeah, of course, what they're looking for is space. I think they got a man a, miss. Yeah, I think they've got a, he's got a, he's playing some type of advantage here. No, I've got another one. Seven dollars. Yeah, still advantage. He's got an off, and look, he's, I think he's got offside here. Of course, the ref, that means yeah. advantage, means he's uh, he spotted Seven. something that uh, the other team did got wrong a, in this case. Looks no like gold. he's going into the pocket. Oh. Can we have a talk about their pen? 
very significant there. The sin bin, of course, is the place you do not want to be as a player. That means Nola Gold is going to have to play one man down. New captain Kyle Bailey, obviously an experienced World Cup player out of Canada, taking over the captain roles from his Canadian teammate Eric Howard. Yeah, it looks like Malcolm got uh, pinged there for uh, not wrapping his arms. I think what I heard, uh, looks like uh, it looks like he, he threw the shoulder in there, Ian, but didn't wrap the arms. And um, that's something you got to do here in rugby is you got to wrap your arms on the tackle. Explain the sin bin for those that don't know what that means, and, and, and it's similar to other sports like hockey. When, when the ref sees something that he considers or he or she considers terribly egregious, uh, he can. Take that card out, that yellow card, which means one of the players is going off. He, he's not just a, a, a penalty that can be rectified with a, a kick or a change of possession, but that player is off the pitch. Or and you're playing a player down and, and, and for 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 yeah, minutes. 10 minutes, and he has to sit, stand there and watch his mates struggle. Now uh, Old Glory has a 15 on 14 advantage, which uh, can be huge in some of those overloads. Let's see if they can exploit yeah, it. Right I, now, they're setting up for a kick. I mean, I don't know if that's a card, Ian. I mean, it, it, he, did, he didn't rap, but it wasn't a real dangerous hit. Um, Aaron Hearn was kind of, like I said, like a statue there. He didn't even, I don't, think he, I don't think he expected the ball and he got hit. And uh, it's a little, it's a little rough to, to give him a card on that. Okay, Old Glory is on the board, 14 to three with that penalty kick. Uh, and to your point, Jeff, yeah, usually you don't see a yellow card for one infraction. Usually it's something that the, the ref has warned a player about, has spoken to a captain about, he keeps seeing it, uh, that may result in a yellow card, or it could be something just completely egregious, which to your point, perhaps we didn't see on that one play yeah, there. I mean, I don't know. Well, a, regardless, just three points for Old Glory. So those are the first points in franchise history. So get excited about that. Yeah, I'm sure they would have wanted seven, but uh, that's, that's Carl Mara with the drop kick, and I, 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 I'm pretty certain that's going to be their plan today is to drop drop that ball yep, way good. deep. And for everyone in D.C., Jason Robertson is the first person in franchise history to score for Old Glory. So that's one they can put in their history books as well. He is. A key acquisition three months ago, playing the fly half. He played super rugby for Bay of Plenty, and he's been an established pro around the world. Check that out. Yeah, raise raise one for him at the uh, the Old Glory watch parties, please. Well, it's at Exiles. Okay. That's where they're all watching at Exiles right now in D.C. area. Good little nudge through by uh, Robbie Coleman. New Orleans probably get this ball back. Glory to pick that up, though. Yeah, that's a, a big man is not going to kick, so he can get Who's doing Good the little up and chip. under? Oh, oh this is trouble. dangerous. Trouble. Oh, playing with the cohesion now. Oh, great tackle on the loose. Oh, just saved that. It looked like a certain try there. I think the ref has got Monty. I think he's got Monty for not rapping, though. I think he's got him for just taking the shoulder. Desperation. Quick tackle. tap. Quick tap here. Robbie Coleman's got him. Go back. The glory threatening. Some of Oh, looks like a little more referee action. Have a word with the captain. See how fast things can oh, turn around one. here. Is it now on tackle? Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's calling that outside. another. Yes. That's what I thought he was calling, but I, I don't yes, agree with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. look at this, boys. We can't have any more. Yeah. Give me a minute. Hey. Just having a chat with him. There's not going to be any more cards for that at the moment. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't agree with the referee on that. I mean, Monty goes low on him, but you can see his left arm is coming around. Uh, so he's uh, trying to get his arms wrapped around him. He hits him with his shoulder first, but you can see the arms yeah, yeah. out. I, I disagree with the call there. Um, the result is a huge opportunity for Old Glory yes. right after getting on the board with their three. They're in very dangerous striking position here, right on the five. Watch, if got a whole toolkit like, of options in front yeah, of them. If you watch that replay, I mean, clearly Monty putting his arm out to try to affect the tackle with his arms. Uh, yeah, he hits him with his shoulder and cuts him down with his shoulder, but the arm is extended in an attempt to make the tackle. I, I don't agree with the ref on that one at all. Well, regardless, Old Glory is in business. You can pick up points quickly in rugby, probably a little quicker than in football. Yeah, let's see what they, how their mall is here. Ball, of course, looks similar to a scrum, right, but much more mobile. Yeah, they're not going anywhere, though. It's kind of stagnant right here, and New Orleans is doing some good defense. 
little fisticuffs there with Mungo Mason again. Kyle Bailey, it looks like. That's a ball spurted out. That's going to be New Orleans' football. That should be New Orleans' ball. Oh, he's got a penalty of some sort. The refs, refs give an advantage to Old Glory, letting them play through it. Through the middle they have a great yeah. opportunity here That's to score. That's okay. Cam Dolan came Don't straight through the middle. Oh, well, that's looks a great like kick he pass. could be all on his own out here. Look at that, that play. play. What right a there. great play. What a great Dead kick. Yeah. And Doug on. Fraser gets the try, but set up by that unbelievable kick. Yeah, kick. that's a kick pass. A lot of people doing that now, using that, that kick pass like you saw there. Jason Robertson, I'm very impressed by him. He's got great feet. He's crafty. Small. He's about five, looks up five, seven. Watch this. It's, a, it's not a kick. It's a, it's a kick pass. He yeah. sees Fraser out there by himself. And it's just a, you know, a point A to point B in the quickest uh, means necessary. But the accuracy is what I'm talking oh, about. Perfect. I mean, it was right there. Yeah. Beautiful play by Old Glory and, and obviously it, Robertson and, and then Fraser to get the uh, reception and the try. Right, and if it doesn't work, you've got the penalty advantage. So if the kick, if it's not a good kick, they still come back to the penalty. So it's an incredibly smart option by Robertson. He's got him out wide. He makes the, If he makes the kick, it's a try for sure. If he misses it, he gets yeah. goes back to the five meters out for the penalty. It's that, really, really good good, good play. It's that quick decision making under pressure yeah, like that I mean, that, uh, that is impressive. Right, sure. I mean, the guy's a Mitre 10 Cup player in New Zealand and he's got some ability, I mean, for sure. See how it paid Very off. impressed. Able to flip the, the, the pitch so quickly there. Very, very hard to defend that when Nola Gold was focused on stopping Old Glory from charging across the try line all the way on the other side. Can he make this kick? He does not. That was a very, very challenging kick. You can see the angle there at which he had to kick it, reduced the goalposts to a bare needle head. Uh, but with their try and with their penalty kick just a few moments before that, a 14 to 0 game has turned into a 14 8 game. Well, this is a good, good example of how the, the conversions, unlike football, which are almost a given, they're 99% most of the time, they're not in rugby. That's why you get two points. Instead of one, they're more difficult because you have to kick from the angle of the score, obviously, and that was a tough angle. Yeah, I mean, that, that, was, oh, that was a weird passage of play. New Orleans had DC down there deep and let him just come back and just run the ball out of it. Um, yeah, so this will be New Orleans ball pretty deep in Old Glory territory here. Let's see if they can get things back going to their own momentum. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Coach Nate Osborne. I was out here yesterday, and I, I noticed that, that that far corner that New Orleans is kicking into is it's a lot of sun. And that was the plan, was to use Carl Myers' big foot to pin D.C. back there and make them exit quickly so that New Orleans could get a line out you know, somewhere around the 50 or in, in, in D.C. territory. It's been working. The two times they've kicked down there, uh, New Orleans has come back with the ball at once on the line out now here. Oh, I guess they get the knock on on New Orleans Crow. first. Yeah, it looks like that uh, because, of course, this is Old Glory scrum. Yeah. In. yeah but, well, the ref here, oh, you'll see quite a bit in rugby. The ref wants to make sure that these scrums come together precisely uh, for safety. And if he doesn't like what he sees, he's going to blow that whistle and make everybody set up all over again. A lot of New Zealanders on this team. Obviously, if you know anything about New Zealand, the All Blacks come from there. And uh, including right now, Tussatella, who's put the ball in play. You see with the opportunity here, if they can keep the ball from their own scrum. And yeah, we see. see them being pushed around right from the start there. Uh, it's hard to get a clean ball out when it's like that. Tussatella with the kick. We had a knock on on Monty uh, Tongo here, but it's Timmy Maupin. He's a good striker with the ball. Let's see what he does here. Covering a lot of territory right there. Julian oh, Dominguez, nice. the new player from Argentina. Yeah. He's very him, aggressive. You see yeah. him working back into the field. He doesn't want to go out of bounds. Wants to keep this ball in play. Pass it on to his mates. They got some, they they got some numbers Carl here. Meyer. They got some numbers here. Gets oh, it over to Eric Cowell. No, on to Cam Dolan, the number eight to the 22-meter line. Yeah, I would have liked to see him use that ball a little quicker. They had some good numbers out there. Nacio Dotti. Yeah, now this could be something good here. Still moving. Remember, these guys are playing. Nogal is playing a man down still. They only have 14 men on the good field. Good point, Ian. 14 on 15 at the moment. Soften the ball up here. Look to suck in a few Rollins. more defenders. Yeah, yeah. 
They're also playing without their leading scorer combined in history, oh, J.P. Eloff from South Africa. He's out for a couple of games as well. Yeah, he got a facial bone fracture. He had a good surgical result, though. He should be back in about three to four weeks, Scott. Yep. Talked to him yesterday. and. Uh, Dottie, by the way, was a World Cup winner in a game when he played for Uruguay this, this past year against Fiji. A little surprise to most people in the, around the world in the rugby community. But what, what Ignacio is known for on this team is, is, is a great tackle. He puts people on the ground. And anyone who watched that World Cup game would have seen that Uruguay did not miss one tackle in that game. Uh, ferocious tackling by Uruguay against Fiji. And, and, and Ignacio is, uh, is, uh, personifies that. Yes. Great tackle. Hey, here we go again. Here we Another. Go. Watch Dominguez. 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 He's just so strong. He is. He can run through you and he can run around tackle you. One of the few guys that can do both for the goal. And he gets those arms kind of moving and it's really hard to tackle. It feels Eric like Howard. It, that's a great. And, and I've been saying that for a while. Like, I want to see Eric Howard taking that ball on a harder strike. And he just did it there. Cam Dolan near the try. Knock, right knocking there. Knocking on the door there. Now Robbie Gold. Oh, you got wide. it. There it is. And he should be able to walk in with that's that. That's a walk in try from him. Maloney Tongawea with the third try for the Nola Gold in the first half. But why walk in when you can dive? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> with a great way to put an exclamation point on a try is to dive it in. Of course, there's usually a, a practical reason for that. You have to touch the ball down. Uh, so in this case, it's just for exclamation. Look also set up by the great pass by Robbie Coleman. So yeah, I mean, it all starts, though, with, with, with Julian Dominguez taking that ball off the left wing and making three or four people tackle him. If you watch him, steps off his left foot hard, makes the drive, keeps the drive going, sucks in more defenders, and then there's tons of space out wide. We it saw really it. all starts with Julian, though, and it's just massive ball carry. We saw it a few times uh, in, in that particular attack, Jeff. You're absolutely right. It looks like Julian's got it with no room, but he makes room, he finds room, he brings it back inside so fast on that step. And again, sucking in defenders. It can't just be a one-on-one. -on -one. He's making two or three people commit, and that overcomes the uh, the personnel advantage that Old Glory temporarily has now with one of the gold players remaining in the sin bin. And that paid off beautifully in the end with that persistence for Nola Gold to find it the open man all the way on the other side of the pitch for that diving try. Yeah. Oh, Meyer for the third try. He is, oh, yeah, just a little sense. bit left on that one. That's why the angles are so important when you get into the try zone. Let's see how this all comes together. It's just a good outlet from Scott Gale. Yeah. Like we said, he's a he's, we'll talk about it he's tri five, traditionally a nine. Not a um, but you see why it's so open is because of the, 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 the mall that was set by New Orleans. It got it to the, the ground. The ref called tackle, so then they have to back away. And, you know, you got tons of space when you suck in defenders. It's very simple. And also, much like the 10 for, for Old Glory, Jason Robertson, hey, the guy was brought in. Robbie Coleman was brought in to play the 10 here, and he didn't start there. He started yeah. fullback because of injuries, but he's at his natural position yeah, right now. And a simple, a similar player to Jason Robertson, yeah. like smallish and good feet, crafty. Um, you see the kick there from Carl Meyer. It's massive. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, that's Robbie's game. He's a stepper, he's real good, and... Uh, wow, ball goes wild. Defuses another see it here. You'll see it here. Old Glory, puts it back in the capable hands of the... This is Ross no Depper Schmidt, uh, University of Alabama grad. No, 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 no. Well, we won't hold that too much against him. <laughs> yeah, Malcolm May is back on the field. That was a quick 10 minutes. Yeah, sure was. But yeah, we are in the closing minutes of the first half here. You know, Ola Gold wow, would love big to run there from Carl Meyer. Put one back on the board, and they're in an attacking position to do that now. Yeah, you can hear some of those hits right up here in the booth. Pretty intense. Of course, so impressive that somebody could take a hit like that and get right back up and go to work. And you got some little space out here in the. Nice. Uh, the, yeah. Oh, Meyer, he's a truck. Uh, Oh, they're Wait. still going here. With the, oh, uh, oh, oh, it's still good. Still good. Yeah, that ball was getting batted around like a volleyball match. They could use this ball quick. They got some They got some issues. Okay. Uh, they got tons of numbers outside if they can get it. Come on, Scotty. Yeah, you see that, there it that is. line of white. If you can uh, get it down there. Ooh, nice play right there for Glory defense. Yeah. Stead. In the tackle, fellas. It's just a knock on. Yeah, in the tackle. They had they had the numbers out wide, Ian, and the ball just kind of got okay. slowed down a little bit at the breakdown. Uh, if Scott could have extricated it a little quicker, it would have been problems. You saw that the 
probably wanted to move that ball wide, and that sh it, it got shut down pretty quickly because the ball didn't come as quickly as he wanted. And that's what we mean when we're talking about fastball. That's yeah. what uh, that's what these teams desire. That's what the, the backs are praying for. Forwards, please win that ball and get it out clean and get it out fast so that we can use these opportunities that we see down the field. Oh, is that far one? It's and that a was a close-up of Robbie Coleman. And we will be talking about him. We don't always yep. point him out what he looks like, but he is definitely one of the key acquisitions this year. Yeah. And they're trying to get another late score before the half ends. It looks like uh, uh, it looks like Holden Younger may be out for this game. I mean, the, he goes for the head, uh, the HIA and the head assessment, injury assessment. He's been out for a while, so I, I would think that Holden's, Holden's day is probably done. Now, let's come up. Let's bring the gap up. Which, of course, is a huge loss. Yeah, it is a huge loss, but again, you know, Ryan Fitzgerald has done an incredible job yeah, of uh, finding players yeah. who can fit different yeah, molds, kind right. of in a Bill Belichick mold. Um, you know, finding people with, with, with who have a variety of skills and can play diverse positions. And we see that on these rosters. You don't see too many Nate Osborne rosters that look exactly the same week after right. week. Five. Very important in this game where yeah. you have to deal with injuries, Set. you have to deal with different opportunities, different looks at opponents. <laughs> Must be murdered a game plan against him. Uh, yeah, the scrum here again, yeah. you can see this. Uh, plain advantage, yeah, they got the scrum penalty again. Yes, plain advantage. A little number through, that's okay. That ball pops out, but of course. Yeah, that's fine, it's fine. Robbie, Robbie's hoping for something there with the kick because they've already got the, the scrum penalty. So Robbie's like, oh, I'll take a lash and a little kick through and see if something can happen. You know, not kicking away possession. He's doing the smart thing there. Of course, a very key element here to rugby is advantage. The ref, when he sees a, an infraction, he doesn't necessarily blow the whistle. He can let the play develop for the benefit of the non-offending team, right? You don't want a, a, a penalty by the offending team to take away your momentum and your chance to score. So that's what advantage is. That's the ref letting it letting it play on until he deems the momentum's gone or the, the time has passed uh, and blows it up and gives possession back to the team that was offended. Yeah, so was atypical of Coach Nate here. He's gonna, he's gonna take the three points right before half, go in with a 14 point lead rather than trying to nudge it in the corner. And try to driving ball for a try. A smart play, get up two full converted tries. At half, if he sneaks it in, and it's good right down, oh. right down the middle for Paul Meyer. Looks like he had to make a little hook there. Yeah, a little hook. He looks like he's well, shooting for that beer, the beer mug all the time. You're looking at the TV, or the, he's looking straight at the thing. It's from right here. It looked like it was down the middle. Our angle here, it looked good. Hey, look at the soul brass band. That's what New Orleans is all about. Second line and fun. It's been an aggressive first half. You know the Nola Gold last year was almost scoring 40 points a match until they had some injuries late. And look like they're on pace for that again with a with a 19 to 8. I guess that it, that wasn't good. So anyway, we're we'll coming right back. Right here on Cox Sports Television. You're watching Nola Gold Rugby. 22 to 8. Old Glory DC Rugby is brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores, proud sponsor of the regional rugby calendar. Find out when Old Glory will hold its clinics in your area. Go to oldglorydc.com and check out the regional rugby calendar presented by Sheehy Auto Stores. Exiles Bar, the official DC area watch party bar of Old Glory. Located 1610 U Street Northwest. Show up at Exiles Bar for every Old Glory game. Welcome back to Cox Sports Television. We're here, right here at the, the Shrine on Airline. We call it the gold mine at the Shrine on Airline, and we can't wait. By the way, 22 to eight score, the high score in NOLA Gold. They're doing just what they did last season when they were scoring about 38 points a game until they had some injuries late in the season, and they, they ended up not scoring as much, but hey, the guy sitting next to me has become a big rugby fan. He needs no introduction. He led the New Orleans Saints, the first major league franchise in the city of New Orleans, to their first winning season ever back in the mid to late 80s. And now he's the founding father of the Who Dat Nation. <laughs> His name is Bobby Bear, and welcome back to the show. You were on here last year, buddy. Yes, yeah, Scott, I, I'm ecstatic. Uh, I like contact. How can you not like rugby? Introduced on the West Bank. Now we're on the East Bank here at the Shrine. I think I think just a great venue, and uh, to be a part of this, I think the fans are going to embrace it, and it's good. To, it's going to continue to grow. And um, well, you couldn't have a more beautiful day, huh? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's like fall football. I mean, it's like in the spring, but the weather's unbelievable, and 
But you haven't gotten out of hand yet, so I'm not going to put you in the sin bin yet. Not yet. No. Uh, I got another, another so 40 minutes to the, go. What is the sin bin? Listen, right? I'm fairly new to rugby, too. I think if you do something like you egregious, <laughs> you go to jail for a little while, and you have to play a man down. But, Bobby, you're very passionate. And now you went from the football field. Now you're at the main radio station here in town, and you talk about the gold a lot. Why did you get so passionate about the game and want to share it with others? Well, uh, because I like sports in general. Uh, I like world sports. Uh, you know, you have a World Cup in rugby. You know, you look at soccer, what they, what they call, the world calls football. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been to cricket matches. So I just love sports and rugby. So I even watched this morning on, on NBC, uh, their sports network. You're watching uh, the, everything? The, the Nation Six or Six Nations. So the rugby. Uh, yeah, All the right. rugby. Yes, so I'm, nice. I'm watching Ireland. Uh, you know, you're watching England versus Scotland. And uh, France did upset England. So I actually. Yes, they did. You know that, too. Yeah, yeah so I do watch rugby on, on TV, and I, I'm glad we have it here in our backyard. Yeah, and it's, it's only growing. The whole Major League Rugby is growing by leaps and bounds. Washington, the new franchise, along with Boston and Atlanta. And I'm going to say this. Washington's watching this game as a football player. Do you have one big memory of Washington? You played against those great teams in the 80s and a little bit in the 90s as well. Yes, uh, I have. Fond memories. Uh, it, it started out to be fun. Uh, we were going to upset the Super Bowl champ Washington Redskins. We were playing at oh, I know the game. RFK Dexter Stadium. Dexter Manley spit in the eye of Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dexter Manley <laughs> spit in the face of Jim Dembrowski, and all of a sudden, uh, a short field goal turned into a long field goal with Martin Anderson. We ended up losing. And I can remember, uh, boy, I was really hooking up with uh, er Eric Martin that game. Uh, going against Daryl Green. Daryl uh, Green was back. That's right. He played fastest, for like 35 years. Uh, yeah, the fastest man in the NFL. So I had fond memories, but I used to hate this playing in D.C., though. When they used to play, you never wanted to hear. You know, they had a band and all like, uh, the band. hail yeah. to yeah. the Redskins. You never wanted to hear. Fight right. for old D.C. We didn't want to hear that. All right, brother. We got to take it. We got a bunch of commercials to do, but Thank thanks you. once again. Bobby Bear, everybody, he loves the gold. Come on out. Hey, we're coming right back right here on Cox Sports Television. You're go, watching go. the NOLA Gold. We'll see you back in just a bit. Welcome back to Major League Rugby here at the Gold Mine at the Shrine on Airline. It's halftime right now. NOLA Gold 22 and Old Glory DC 8. It's been a very physical game at times. The Nola Gold, who really weren't that great in the scrums at the end of the season, they seem to be the physical part of it right now. They're playing very well. And as far as you, you're the coach right here. Uh, Jeff Orange, <laughs> how do you think this game has gone so far for the goal compared to last season? Yeah, I think New Orleans' game plan is working well. They knew they would do I think they knew they'd dominate the scrums today, and they're doing that. And everything, all their tries have come off of that dominance in the, in the scrum. And let's look at some highlights, Ian. Let's talk about this first one. Obviously, Cam Dolan, the two-time World Cup player for the United States, got the gold off the, on the board. What you're seeing throughout the first half of this game, Scott, has been these good scrums setting up opportunities. Not only are they getting their own ball, they're putting it in the position they want to be. They're forcing uh, Old Glory into some bad positions. And when these opportunities arise like this, out comes the ball, in comes the one play. Like I said earlier, six men can try to do that for 10 minutes. It might not do it. But uh, that one instance, bang, he's out. And they're on the uh, result in another try. This might be the play of the game so far. Well, here it goes all the way across for Old Glory. Yes. This one looked like they were uh, down and out. Spark back to life with that that cross the pitch play there. But it's been uh, gold since then too. Here he goes, the, uh, again, knocking on the door right on the try line. They decide to switch gears a little bit, get it wide, ship it to Moni, and that exclamation point of a dive in for the try. Now New Orleans would miss the conversion on that one, but pick up a penalty score late in the game, at, right at the whistle, so it's 22 to eight. Yeah, so Dolan and obviously Tongawi and May got the three tries. Hey, listen, last year the goal scored a lot. They're doing it again. We're coming right back for the second half on Cox Sports Television. Welcome back to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. Look at the stadium right there. Hey, listen, this is a 10,000 seat stadium. A lot of people went in at halftime and they went to get some food and beverage, but they'll be back in the stands in a bit. 22 to 8 is the score. Let's look at the scoring right here, Ian. You have Vanilla Gold, like I said, the two-time World Cup starter. Cam Dolan got the first one. And then Carl Meyer got two of his three conversion goals. He's the new kicker from South Africa. 
And uh, the second one was Malcolm May. I couldn't be happy for him. Two Achilles injuries that wiped out the last two seasons. So he gets his first score for the NOLA goal. Good performance so far in the first half for NOLA, for sure. Those, uh, those tries have come pretty much the same way. Different people making those scores, but they've all been uh, played right. from close, close, close Beautiful. to uh, the Old Glory. Uh, end zone, and you know we haven't seen any of those huge, Kyle. big breakaway plays yet. It's been persistence yeah. and good scrum. Yeah, let me stress what happened with Jason Robertson. That was definitely, in my opinion, the play of the game for either team when Old Glory got their first try in their franchise history and when uh, Frazier running in after the great kick pass. And here we are at the second half. Back in action again. Old Glory kicks off to Old Glory. Old Glory sensing their options. Surprising that they've kept it right there. I thought for sure they'd be looking to kick that away quickly. They're going to do that now. Stay, stop, stop, stop. And ooh, right into the waiting hands of Nola Gold. Burning through a lot of territory. Look out. He's loose. Does he have support? He does. Oh, but try rescuing tackle by Old Glory. Way to respond there. But Nola Gold still has the momentum. And it picked away. Almost still taken away by Old Glory. But New Orleans able to recover. And hey. They were able to capitalize on that with Marty Tolaria with the second try of the match. He came off the bench most of last season. Yes. Now he gets the opportunity to start, and he's rewarding head coach Nate Osborne Scott, with two tries in one game. Scott, that's the exciting try that the first half had been had been missing. That that's the wide open try right there. The huge breaks burning through the pitch. And watch the most important part, support. It wasn't just on one man. It was the ball, each time the ball runner was looking for support, he had it right there. He was able to clear the pitch, move that ball around, stretch the defense, even when it looked a little scary, like Old Glory was going to pick that off. Didn't quite happen for them, and New Orleans was able to capitalize and start off the second half with a bang. Yeah, Carl Meyer with a big break there, about a 25, 35 meter break, sets that up. Uh, well, Glory almost picked that ball off as Scott Gale was trying to spin it wide, but uh, New Orleans got fortunate there and they slotted it in. But. That could have been an extreme yeah. reversal of right. fortune there, yeah, but it paid just, off well for Nola Gold. I have Gold. to say, most sports is a, are a game of inches, and that was no yeah. exception because that could have been five the other way. Yeah, and that's what we talked about in the first half. When you throw that flat ball at the line, you're susceptible to the interception. Carl Mark has uh, slotted that. It looks like to me, Ian, that uh, New Orleans has done a wholesale interchange in the front row. I see Ben Tarr out there. Glad to have him back. Uh, had some uh, slip disc in his uh, cervical uh, neck last year and recovered amazingly. And I know you know him real well, Scott. And, uh, oh, I love Ben Tarr. But by the way, hey, let's just say this. That's the first point for the NOLA goal because they got four tries. That's a rule in Major League Rugby. You get four tries, you get a bonus point, and they come in handy at the end of the season. Oh, for sure. Hey, the Old Glory home opener is next Sunday at Cardinal Stadium on the campus of Catholic University. I know it well. I live there. That is a great place. And go convenient metro access and plenty of parking. Go to oldglorydc.com and purchase your tickets. Old Glory now looking to answer. Uh, yeah. Um, they Nice, nice take on the kickoff, and then I'm uh, not really sure about why he's squibbling through there uh, off the next phase. Inside, kind of would have liked to see Old Glory keep their possession here. Scotty Gale with a big exit here. Oh, that's massive. And that bounce. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great kick off the back of the scrum by the nine. Scott Gale from their own 22. So again. Ian, Ian, we talked about earlier, these try zones are a little, little shallow, so... Um, you're not going to get the time to get that ball to the exit by your 10, so the nines are going to have to, you know, really assist in, in that kicking game today. Yes, the try zones here are extremely narrow. They're diving board thin, really. Uh, changes some of the dynamic of the kicking game for sure, as you pointed out. Uh, oh, New, like no, New Orleans stole that one, Ian. They pick it up out of that line out, of course. Uh, just p possession is a very temporary thing in rugby. Every, every phase is a contest to see who's going to keep the ball, who's going to turn it over. Worked out well Wide for Noah Gold. Tackle by Threaten Palamo. Stay there, fellas. Blow the ball down, little little hit here, little tips play here. Now they got some they can use the ball out wide. See what they have here. Oh Glory doing a good job so far of countering and yeah. Uh, bottle, oh, Cam Dolan! Great line. That's a try. That's Till I say that. that. Be Julian wow. Dominguez. Very beautiful. Play. Nice tackle, though. Nice tackle by Jason right. Robertson. Got a high tackle here, too. So, Ian, they, they want to use this ball quick now. 
Yeah, he's, he had the he penalty advantage. Okay, you see that, what we saw there was good support, right? That ball was, was kept alive by having your mates close by to offload to, uh, having some options on either side, keeping the defense guessing, uh, and that, that high tackle against Old Glory would be costly for them. Yeah, I, I, it's unfortunate that we're on the other side uh, from where Jillian Demuth is running, but uh, he's it's all that we, uh, that's been uh, told about. I mean, 10 over school, 10 over school. Yes, he's uh, he, he's put on a show so far. It's been really exciting to watch his debut for Nola Gold. Yeah, he's he's dynamic. There's no doubt. I mean, you saw him get that ball wide. I thought he'd have the pace to, to take it, but uh, he turned it back inside, smart, so he didn't get pushed in the touch. You know what his nickname is? Uh, the Chicken Man. The Chicken his Man. His dad was the Chicken Man, yeah. so he's also known as the Chicken Man. Yeah. And uh, Polo. It's chicken in Spanish. I don't know many Spanish. Yeah, words, and, the, and the Australians, I heard Con Foley and Scott Gale calling him Chook yesterday. Chook. Just, uh, <laughs> common vernacular for chicken in Australia. Fuck him, mate. He's going to have a great time at the Fried Chicken Fest here right. in New Orleans come September, I'm sure. But here we go with Nola Gold charging again. They win that line out. Uh, they mauled it briefly. Tried to make a, a jab at the goal. It wasn't effective, but they still have possession and are threatening again. And the ball was knocked on. Good benefit for the defenders on that one. We haven't mentioned Con Foley's name. You see Cam Dolan there, but Con Foley was in the screen a second ago. He is the one Olympian that the Nola Gold had when they went to Rio in the sevens, and they came back, and Con played for Australia. He and Scott Gale are roommates and good friends and, and both great rugby players as well. Yeah, I'm actually uh, one of their roommates, too. I get all the, the messages from American Can Company about the water issues. Okay, so good news for Old Glory is they, they got the ball back on that knock-on. Bad news is it's scrum time with their backs against their own wall. Let's see if they can keep this ball, get it out clean, kick it away. Now this is what we're talking about here, Ian. You see, this this is where the short or the shallow try zone is really kind of problematic. New props on, new hooker on. Let's keep that gap, please. Of course, this is an old uh, baseball uh, field, right. baseball both sides. stadium. It's both sides. And it's it's about five meters, but muscle, you'd yeah. like to see it a little deeper, Ian. Of course, so like makes the job easier on the ten. He's going to have to get a quick kick away here. They may what they may do here is try to punch it up one and then do an exit. You do one punch up here and try to exit after that hit uh, rather than putting uh, Jason un under, under pressure. First time for the scrum. Set. No guarantees of possession when two teams like this are contesting. Let's bring it right back up. They just went down together, no penalty there. But again, that's a safety issue. Ref's gonna watch the scrum probably more closely than anything else that happens on the field because of just the power of two packs coming together. Uh, it has to be safe for the players. Yeah, what they'll do now, though, if, if they go to the ground, if the ball is at the back of the scrum, if it's near the eight man, they're going to play even if they're on the ground now, and they're just going to let that ball play out, which is good. Um, but if it's nowhere even clear to the, near the back, they're going to blow that up and reset it. Bonds! Set! Hear the cadence of the teams, right. hear them calling to each other. That's a big push from New Orleans. Oh, Big push from New Orleans, and they just, it's unfortunate that they're, they're dominating the scrum. Yeah, they're going to be penalized for that. Uh, yeah, it looks like someone was trying to feather the ball back at the second rows there. There it is, yeah. yeah and that was coming to pieces on them anyway. Yeah. See, they're being driven back there. So it'll be scrum time again, of course, but this time Nola Gold's ball. And what do you see here, Jeff? Do you think they're going to try to march it a little yeah, bit in the scrum formation? Yeah, they're going to go for the scrum here, Ian. They're going to try to drive it, hopefully get it over. If not, they'll try to try to have to bring, if they get them pushed back, they'll hopefully bring in the 10 to join the the, the scrum or something and get some numbers out wide. But I, I think they're going to try to march this over. So watch through the opportunities here. A couple different ways to attack from yeah. the scrum directly, or you see your backs all lined up there, ready and waiting, very willing. Yeah. So you see Julian Dominguez is inserted in the back line more or less. Oh, Frazier's got to stay on the other wing just in case Cam Dolan goes back that way on a pick. So now you've got the overload here with bringing Julian into uh, like a sec what we call a second level of the back line. Frazier can't mark it. So uh, New Orleans actually may ship this if they don't get any push. They're going to ship this ball quick with the overload. Glory here saying 
this fine if we can take this ball away from you too. Use it, use it. Backward. Scrum collapse, but the ref is saying use it, go ahead. Yes, he was at the back foot, so it was okay that it went. Hands behind the rock, fellas, hands behind. Here comes your pick and goes, Ian, you, you well know. Keep driving towards that goal post. All too well, as a prop, this was pretty much my bread and butter. <laughs> uh, here's Old Glory, backs to the wall. Hoping for a, a knock on. Hopefully maybe they, they, they can poach it, one of these rocks. It's got to be patient here. Keeping it tight, keeping it tight. You have to be patient here. You can't go 105 miles an hour. And yeah, Cam Dolan's going to want to get that ball to the ground, or there could be a mall if the ref wants to call it a mall. Looks like he's in. Close. Held up. Many boys Held up. Okay, earlier when we saw that diving try from Moni with nobody around, the diving try is because you have to touch that touch ball, ball down. Ground, if it crosses right, exactly. the plane, whatever, it doesn't matter until that ball is touched down. And so good defenders can keep you up Keep the, can keep the ball Trump, fellas, from touching the ground, uh, insert themselves between it and the pitch, and, and, and save a try, which is what just happened there. Of course, no room for a dive there. That was just a grinder out. Uh, but yeah, good defense by uh, DC there. Um, you know, three pick and goes. Cam Dolan went in a little high. I thought DC was going to hold him up to get a mall, uh, create a mall, and then collapse that mall, which they could do in that in that instance and get the ball. They did a really good job. Cam wants to get a little bit lower there, not go in so high. He's six five, so um, you know, we, uh, we DC, you know, give it to him. They're just sticking in this game. Good defense. You know, the three tries converted tries down. It's but they can't let one go in here. It's been an impressive stand for them, though. They're, they're, they've been defending yeah. every inch. Yeah. They got. They got. They got to get something here. Either you know, a turnover, a knock on, or something, or they're in trouble. Set. Again, scrum troubles. Yeah. Everyone, you know, Ian. Everyone's trying to get a little bit of, uh, trying to get a little advantage there on that initial impact, and. Uh, you know, Benny, no, a couple ben penalties against you guys, especially yeah. against number one. Yeah. Any more down here I gotta tell you, open. I'm gonna give some love to the audio here. Chris Metter, they're doing such a great job. I can hear everything. You hear all the natural sounds of the hits. This has been great. Good right for Tim Van Guy and Walter Valpatti in the truck. And of course, like I said, Chris Metter's doing audio. And the 8-2, Dylan Charlie up here is taking care of business for us as well. Yeah, the, the, the audio is very instructive actually, Scott, especially for uh, newcomers to rugby, you can hear some of the negotiations, some of the explanations. There's a constant Five. patter going on between the official and the team captains. Yeah, see again, New Orleans. You can see that loose head for DC is having some troubles, uh, unfortunately. Damn, Dolan, he gets it, it in. Yeah. His second goal, so he's got two, Matt, I mean, second try, excuse me. He's got two tries as well as Moni Tessa What did we talk about earlier? Different ways to score. They could have gotten that ball out wide to one of their speedy backs, but in this case, they want to just go deep into the trenches. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're just controlling the ball at the back. Cam Dolan, 6'5", 240 against Tusatola, smallish, uh, tough, tough try for him, but look, it's just dominating the scrum again. I mean, here it is. Just... Old Glory was able to hold it up in that first attack this yeah. time, no dice. Right. He was able to spin, get that ball down, no chance to stop that We one. haven't mentioned number one, the loose head prop, Matt Harmon, doing a phenomenal job. Last year, he played some hooker and prop. Now he's starting at prop, and he's done a great job all game long, along with Eric Howard and Dino Waldron, right down in the mix with the big boys. Yeah, Matt Harmon, you know, came back to, uh, this year with about 20 pounds on him, great guy. He uh, coaches one of the uh, local rugby teams here, the Crescent City Blues, Ian Holden Youngert, and, uh, you know, again, giving back to the rugby community. Uh, but, you know, Matt, he's put on some strength, and he was always strong, but he's even stronger now. If you all remember last year, he would come in some games later in the games and just really dominate the scrums. It was good. So let's see how this comes together again. You know, there's this, the, that extended attack. It seemed like Nola Gold was down here for an eternity, banging on the door. And let me tell you, that is exhausting. It's exhausting on offense. It's more exhausting on defense to have to try to repel these constant attacks. And eventually, when the scrums are going the way they've been going for Nola Gold, you know you're going to hit pay dirt. Yeah, and this, you know, people, this, unfortunately, the scrum is is uh, not as, it, people don't think it's as important as it used to be, but uh, I disagree. Hey. Quick note for the big guys. No backs have scored a try out of the five scored by the Nola Gold. Two from Cam Dolan, number eight. You have Malcolm May at number seven, and then Moni Tongawea. So none of the backs who usually score a lot of 
tries. Stop in front four. None, none four, of them stop. yet. Oh, four, Moni is stop. sometimes an honorary back being a flanker. I guess position. He's close enough. <laughs> Both sides want it. Let's put it that way. I hope not held in the tackle. So, BC could do something here if they can move this ball. Uh, if they come, if they re recycle this ball quickly and come back left, they've got numbers. Yeah, but he knocked it on, unfortunately. And they're going to have to find some way to change up the script at this point because you see the clock is ticking. Plenty of game left here, but with those two tries to open up the second half, that pulls New Orleans to 36 to 8. We saw a flurry of, of scores from, from Old Glory there with that penalty kick and then that, that brilliant try in the corner, uh, unable to convert, of course. Uh, but it got him eight points in quick order. We haven't seen much from him offensively since. Yeah, I mean, th look, Old Glory, if you look at their roster, there's a lot of top level players who aren't playing today. What do you think, fellas? Um, you know, you're miss they're missing a lot of top level players here. I don't know why they're not playing, yeah, why they're here. They're Let's hope that player gets well soon. Like, let's take a look at the Nola Gold upcoming schedule. They hey, brought to you by Cox. Hey, that rugby ATL next week, that is a big one. That's going to be on national television. That is a natural rivalry, Atlanta, New Orleans. The best Saints Falcons rivalry is the best one south of the Mason Dixon line. That goes and, deep. And I think folks here are trying to develop the same thing with rugby ATL. But later in the season, Old Glory, they go to Washington, D.C., April 11th. We're looking forward to that, and I'm sure Old Glory is putting a circle on that game. Yeah, like I said, Scott, you know, there's a lot of guys that uh, that aren't playing today that are on their roster who are really top-level players. Uh, well, that, how about the best prop in the world? Yeah, I mean, okay, let's, the, start with him. let's start right. with the best loose head in the world. You uh, showed some of the best tight heads in the world uh, something uh, to deal with. But they've got a kid uh, also who played front row for the Eagles. Uh, his first name, Michelangelo, uh, he's quite good, too. And um, he's not out here today. Um, Josh Brown's another guy I don't see out here today. He's a little 31-year-old, tough guy in the back of the uh, the back of the scrum at eight. Um, that, so, you know, they're just rounding into shape. You know, this is their first game. It's 16-game season. And uh, as you well know, Scott, from what happened with New Orleans last year, it's a long season. Things change. Uh, rugby's a punishing, physically demanding sport, so um, things things can change very easily with uh, with personnel. Hey, Old Glory's done a great job with their leadership. Obviously, Dunleavy and Jay Sheehy, the yeah. owners, and GM Tim Brown, they've developed a lot of talent, and I'm sure by... Mid-season, they're going to be right there in the mix with all the rest of the good teams. Oh, yeah. Well, there's plenty of game left here in uh, the Shrine, the gold mine at the Shrine on Airline. Of course, that's Airline Drive we're referring to here. We're in Metairie, which is just outside of New Orleans proper, our new home. Uh, so exciting for Nola Gold to have this venue, this facility. Uh, and what a debut they've, they've performance they've put on so far for the fans. But you're right, still 25 minutes to go. Anything can happen, right? Yeah. So, we'll slow this down one more time. Comes, Robbie's got some space. Wow. wow. Whoa. I mean, he's just real good. Yeah. The oh. chicken man's <laughs> first try. His I first mean, score he's... for the Nola Gold. I hope there are some new people watching rugby out there because Nola Gold is showing you every possible way to score right yeah. now. I mean, big punishing run by Carl Meyer. Robbie Coleman with a dainty left-footed kick. He is a left-footer. But, and then, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know what happened there with D.C. They looked like the guy was coming over and covering in to get this football. Look at him, he's just waiting. And then Julian just, look at him, he's just so strong. strong. Ducks Julian him. Dominguez. He just ducks him. Yeah. And you see again that dive to make sure the exclamation yeah. point well, goes I mean, on the try. But I, I thought for sure that that ball was, was, was bound for touch. Yeah, but, or at least the 15 for D.C. was going to come across and, but you see the strength when he, he just palms off two defenders. Um, to be able to do that, to, 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 to catch, the, to, to pick up that ball on the bounce, to know you're about to get clobbered, but to take evasive maneuvers. The duck, yeah, it was a two on one right there. He managed to evade them both, keep his feet, not trip up, keep the ball in hand, and deliver the pay dirt. The first day he arrived in New Orleans, he asked the, the team, the GM, who was the leading scorer last year? They said Tristan Blue at 13 tries. He goes, I'll get at least 14. Yeah. So he's got Old. confidence and he's got ability <laughs> to back it up. Yeah, I mean, the, there's no there's no loss of confidence with Argentinian rugby players. I mean, <laughs> and no loss of how tough they are. Um, you can see it in this kid. I mean, he is all that um, everyone said he would be. He's, you know, he's played at a high level there. Uh, Argentinian 15, which is one level below the Pumas. Argentinian sevens. Looks like Carl may have hooked that one. 
Uh, yep. But, you know, he steps so hard off that left foot and comes back with the hands and the palm offs. I mean. Tricky angle on that conversion doesn't come through for them. There we go. Watch this but look, here. At, look at the look way he's the he here. He's just, I mean, Doug Frazier's a, look, see, boom, he's just so strong. And then he pop, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take back what I said earlier. I thought he ducked that that tackle. No, he did not. Right. <laughs> he basically and, and just Frazier, plowed through yeah. it. And Doug Frazier's played a few games for uh, the Canadian national team on the wing. So that's no small task there. Oh, uh, yeah, see, is... <laughs> yeah, offside there in New Orleans. Offside in New Orleans. That looks like several penalties in a row there. Really yeah. backed him up. Is that the ref's discretion? Can't go quickly on a second on a March 10. You cannot do it on a second. I doubt DC is going to take a scrum here. Um, looks like he's going to tap and go and just try to see what they can do here. Get it out to threaten Palamo. Just try to get him to the ground. Quiet! Big, big, Keep big guy. One. Badly in need of some tries here for yeah. Glory. Yeah. But New Orleans has got to be careful. They're, they're been offside step twice back. in a row here, and the ref is on it. A good hit. Kind of thing they will definitely be paying attention to. It's a big hit by Cam Dolan. Swept back on a penalty. You got a captain, fellas? Oh, yeah. Looks like a uh, yeah, ref Rogan. Not off, not offside. Not offside. Yeah, they're not making it back. I'm going to chat yeah. about the, the offside. First time in the second half, 20 minutes in. Yep. Not having Fresh. it again. Yeah, yeah. Because we're down here. Next one will go. And that's the ref warning that uh, he's seen quite enough offsides. Just about, just see, just see he's penalized here, them by pushing Nola Gold so back and advised them that uh, the yellow card might not stay in his pocket for long if it continues. Yeah, they need to they need to retreat pretty quickly. You know, the, the ref's not going to put up with guys being offside and, and mucking up uh, DC's quick ball. So yeah, he's, looks like he's talking to Kevin O'Connor there. DC did a good job there recycling the ball, moving it quickly. They're in an ideal position right now if they can capitalize yeah. their line out. They take the ball nicely, bring it down. They're going to try to Missed maul it. Sack now. Yeah, they, they 21 around. Got some good they got a good platform here if they can keep low. Yeah, if they spin see, this. Oh. See what they're doing. They're, they're coming in long and narrow. Yeah. Definitely making some progress. Roll away. That was former Nola goal, Matt Houston, with the with the ball carrying right there. He played for Rooney last year. He played Nola Gold in his first year. He was second team MLR with the Nola Gold. Once a gold, always a gold. In the hearts and minds of fans. There it is. He's got the rock right now. Houston wants to score badly against his former teammates. I know that. Yeah. Well, and Old Glory needs everything he can give him. Wow, that's a good poach there. That's that's oh, not rolling away though. Number 16. This should be a try here. This could be a try for that. Yeah, it's an accidental and a score for the ball. He, no. he didn't get in. Okay. No, he's an accidental uh, obstruction there, 16. but he's got 16 for putting his hands in Slowing the ruck. R16, Lindsay? Yeah, so Lindsay's going to see. Lindsay's going to have a going to have a 10 minute breather for slowing the ball down. By the way, he is the brother, the stepbrother of Jake Turnbull. Yeah. Uh, these two have never played against each other. It's the first time ever that they've been on opposite teams. They've obviously played with Glendale back in the day and the Houston Sabercats last season. Yeah, Lindsay's uh, went to Waverly School in, in Sydney, uh, East uh, Sydney, yeah, suburbs. Sub, yeah, Eastern suburbs, Eastern suburbs yeah. of Sydney, uh, right around Bondi Beach. So through all that, uh, I believe he's old actually ball a, still. He's got American attacking. citizenship too, so. He does, he does. His mom's from Austin. Fellas, it's just a couple of knock-ons. First one by White, second one by Blue. Okay, a series Stop. of knock-ons there stops the ball. Looks like it's going to be Blue's ball. Fellas, and we do, of here. course, we have a, an update with but, another player in the sin bin from that previous By the way, what I'm told about Lindsey Nelson, this won't be his last time in the sin bin. <laughs> if there's a scrap, he's going to get involved in it, uh, even more so than Holden Younger, I'm told. <laughs> well, never. <laughs> Okay, we're at the 60-minute mark, which means the water's coming out. We're out of time for a little breather here. Old Glory can concentrate their thoughts on capitalizing on their great position. Yeah, here's a chance to get a little minute break. But, hey, the Supply Room is a proud sponsor of Old Glory DC. Hey, no matter what your office needs, we can get it to you with next-day shipping and unbeatable prices. Choosing your one-stop office supplier is as easy as visiting www.thesupplyroom.com. And how about Iron Vine? The connected world is a safer place for Old Glory fans thanks to Iron Vine Security. Iron Vine provides cutting-edge cybersecurity solutions for enterprises across the U.S. 
and of course around the world as well. At Iron Vine, we are driven by purpose to solve the toughest security challenges so you can stay at the top of your game. So what do you see so far in the first 20 minutes? Just like the beginning of the game, two quick tries by Nola Gold that happened again in the second half. So they, they stretch the lead out pretty quickly, uh, Jeff and Ian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you, you got some substitutes in for New Orleans and just kind of getting their feet. Kevin Sullivan's in for Matt Harmon right now. So you do have a, a full, uh, a new front row. Now, with Lindsay out, Kevin O'Connor is going to come into the hook position. Um, yeah, Nicola Bursick's in as well. And not a huge drop That's off with these guys. That's actually interesting, though, because Kevin O'Connor, I mean, it's, I'm sure he's played it many times, but he's never, I haven't seen him play it with us no, here yeah. in New Orleans. Actually, you know, they were thinking about getting Kevin to convert to hooker a little bit, but he's he's come on pretty strongly in the, as a back rower. Um, I know they worked him at it, but I don't think he's ever played a high-level game at hooker. But this is a great example. Obviously, your, your guy, when he goes out of the game, he cannot come back in. That's Eric Howard, who was the captain last year. Right. The guy who came in for him, Lindsey Nelson, he ends up going into the sin bin, so they're forced to do something. That, Lindsey Stevens, excuse me. What do I think about Lindsey Nelson? That's the old TV guy. Lindsey Stevens, I apologize, Lindsey. But he, uh, with him out, you have to go makeshift to figure out who's going to be the hooker, I guess. I think, I think right Lindsey now. Nelson was a pitch for the Kansas City Blues back in the day. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So Kevin goes to hooker, you'll see here. He doesn't really have to do much here, but hold the scrum up because it's DC's feed. Um, uh, you know, DC should do something Set. here. This should be, I, I think they should capitalize on this. They need to I turn mean, this into points. Yeah. They're, 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 they're still playing. getting pushed back. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. And Nola. they lose the ball. That's uh, Nola Gold takes yeah. over. Yeah. Able to acquire it from that scrum. Yeah, good. Hold it, Robbie. Yeah, so Robbie's just going to go to the ground. See, there again is that short, oh, no, that, no, that no, shallow no, try zone is a bit of a problem. Yeah, it doesn't give them much room to work yeah. with at all. That's why they're punching the ball up here instead of going out the back, which you would usually do. Watch how quickly he's going to have to get this Stay away. Trying to gain some real estate. Yeah. Get the ball out to his kicker. Carl Myers got a big boot, though, so thankfully. That time didn't go very far yeah. at all. We're still behind the 22. Yeah. But, you know, again... That was not his 70-meter kick. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, people try to talk about the scrum as a possible dinosaur in rugby yeah, yeah. on the brink of, of the extinction, but here you see today just how important it is, Ian, you know, to set up to set up everything. Yeah, there's no gimmies in a yeah. good, with a good scrummaging. Uh, but Old Glory on. gets an, yep, yeah. another chance. Fortunate, fortunate knock on there by Old Glory. Uh, which comes diffused with a knock. And again, you know, the, the big picture here for, for folks who are watching rugby or maybe a little new at it is, is continuity. That's what all of these penalties are about. It's about player safety and it's about continuity. The, the ref wants to keep the ball moving. In an ideal situation, he never he doesn't blow the whistle. The, the ball just keeps flowing. Uh, it's contested in each tackle. Team may take it back from the other team. But when things like a knock-on happen, um, with something of like these offsides, if there's a forward pass, Five. all of these things are, yeah. are, 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 are breaks in the continuity. I think New Orleans is going to have a, a little a little rumble here out of the backs, the way they're set up here. With the, it, the wing is kind of in the inserted position. Well, that's probably off now that they didn't get a good clean ball. Yep, had to freelance there, a little yeah. improvisation. Yeah, and uh, Cam Dolan, you can see that was a messy scrum. Cam went in and held on, and a penalty for... Not releasing the ball. And you have to, as the ball carrier, once you're tackled, you have to release the ball, so give everybody a chance to contest for it. Again, fair play, like we're talking about. Continuity and, and fair contest for possession. Exactly. Quali had that ball over there. Oh, wide, yeah. and he's got room to work with for sure. He's got some help. Exactly. Put on his back. That was Renata Roberts Tanana, who they just signed literally January 14th, so he's brand new, just like Julian Dominguez is. Good tackle by, looks like Benny. Step up. Blue Gold able to fend them off for now, but they've spent a That's whole New Orleans lot. turned it over, though. Let it come now, Blue! Whole lot of time behind Nicola their 22. Nicola turned that ball over, and now it's New Orleans' ball. But that's why you never give up on a play. Even the it's possession can change instantly. And Kevin Sullivan's going to take it up. List him at 233. That's a little, little generous to his ego. 
Um, Kevin Sullivan. Oh, Sullivan. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look at some of them Connor. Okay. Yeah. Sullivan. Yeah, Sullivan. Yeah, Sullivan. All bounces. His uh, Wikipedia page, which I think is self-made, says he's 283. <laughs> uh, he's a great player. Yeah, though. great guy. He worked for me for a while yep. in my law firm, and everyone loved him. Good guy. Tremendous guy. Yeah. In Bay Area, Cal Berkeley, so he's uh, no dummy. Uh, okay, so Irish. after all of that, uh, Gold Glory has been an extended amount of time there right against Nola Gold's try line without any points to show for it, unfortunately for them. Uh, and here we are back at midfield now. So that's got to be a little frustrating for Old Glory because that's a lot of time off the clock uh, to threaten, to threaten, to threaten. Even set, fellas, even set. Not come up with anything. Yeah, I mean, New Orleans is playing good defense, but there's, there's just a lack of structure and realignment by DC. Um, which is really hurting him. Great yeah. angle right there for the, the camera angle on the, on the lineup. That was nice. I'd like to get an update on Holden Younger. If, Stop uh, in front. If someone could let us know if Scotty's still in there. That's going to come back, too. You can hear the uh, expletive after that. <laughs> went straight right. into touch. Explain that, though, for the new fans. So That's basically, a good yeah, the ball was outside of the uh, New Orleans' 22. So once it's outside of the 22, if you kick it straight out of t into Stop. touch, which would be number the sideline, um, then it comes back to where you kicked it from. Which hurt day. last season against Third Rooney. That was one of the reasons that they yeah. might not have won that match and they might not have gotten the playoffs, but there's several things that go on during yeah. the season. Think about Both it like ways. this. If you're behind your 22, you're really close to your own try zone. This is this is sort of your protective area, so they allow you to, 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 to kick it and it can go right out, right? But if you're somewhere else on the pitch, you have to use more skill in order to put that ball where stolen you want anyways. It. Second stolen line out by the Colts. They got one earlier in the game. Uh, I mean, Nacho's, you know, that's, he's a high-level player. You know, Uruguayan select player. World Cup, exactly. Yeah. There's Ben Tarr getting a little. There's know. our boy Ben Tarr. Yeah. He's putting the ball down. Ben was a starter. You he said? had a neck injury last season, so we're so glad yeah. that he's back in on he, the he's, pitch. He's not going to step yet, but he'll he'll that's take right. it to the ground quickly and strong with that's strong strong presence. That's Ooh, right. That ball just pops up. I see. Old Glory is going to field it well, but immediate tackle. tackle. Good way to offload it, though. Keep this alive. Old Glory's got some options. Roll the gold track it up. You're going to your track here. You just stay wide. You, you, you basically sacrifice a few meters to keep the ball inside. Great defense. Robbie Coleman actually forcing that ball oh. back. See, yeah, that just can't happen. That's a knock on there, too, unfortunately. Yeah, you see Old Glory. It's just, you know. It's tough. You're trying to get the ball wide, move the ball quickly, and uh, you, you take your eyes off the football. Yeah, it's basically like football. I mean, yeah. you, you look above the ground field before you catch the actual ball, and it happens in, in this yeah. sport as well. You know, there's a guy right in your face. There's a guy to your left saying, okay, move the ball to me, uh, you know. And ideally, what you want to do is, is, you know, when you catch this ball, is catch it at speed. You know, you don't want to be just standing still. You get the ball. Okay, I see it and track it. It didn't go. What uh, what these guys are really trying to do is, is come on to the ball with speed so that they can they can drive with it. Uh, but it, you know, the, 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 the knock-ons that we've seen are uh, un unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, a, a regular occurrence for that. Five, six. Now, New Orleans is dominating the scrum again. That was a little awkward. Yeah, that didn't. I don't go know if Scotty wanted that. See, yeah. Uh, didn't seem to go quite as planned. Well, of course. So, Ian, it goes back to see if you control your scrums, your ball is so much cleaner to use. And you know, New Orleans is second scrum in a row that they nice had play an issue. There. That's a beautiful play. Oh, it looks like Old Glory's got something cooking now. Uh, it's Backwards. Ref saying play on. That ball went backwards, but it finally does bounce out. Yeah. <laughs> Crowd doesn't like it. Crowd didn't think it went out. And of course, that would have uh, set up Roller Gold for some quite exciting play down the pitch. Yeah, there were, you know, Tusatola, Tusatola got the ball there and stepped back towards the, 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 the touch line. I don't understand Trying why he didn't step back in. Right yeah. Though, yeah. Danny he stepped Tusatola. back to the middle where his support was. Probably had a little bit more opportunity in the middle of the field rather than bring it back to the touchline. Okay, so some really exciting phases of play there for Old Glory. Looked like they really had something going. Unfortunately, uh, couldn't couldn't quite stitch it together on that last pass. That's not straight. Not even close. So that'll come back. So that's again what we're talking about. That ball's got to be straight down the tunnel. Maybe a little askew if it's on the inside shoulder, but that one was way off the outside shoulder. It's all about fair play, the fair contest for the ball, right? You can't 
can't toss it right to your I, own I, team. No offense, but it, you know, New Orleans has lost its last two scrums, but you have a, a flanker who's actually hooking. Uh, so that's probably has something to do with why they're, you know, with Kevin O'Connor in there at the hook. They're not getting that strike. Could have a lot to do with it. I mean, yeah. it's not his regular position. Yeah. Let's go, fellas. And we're quickly approaching the final uh, 10 minutes of this game. 41 to 8. Uh, got to look at that point spread and think things are slipping away for old glory. So what's the strategy now for the gold? I mean, listen, they're up 33 points. I mean, what, what are they doing now? Are they just going to slow it down? Nah, there's no prevent, really prevent, until the last two minutes. I mean, it's your first game. You want to work your pattern. You want to work your offense. You want to get things clicking for next week. So, you know, every minute out there is a training minute. You know, so... Um, you know, they're going to move the football. They're going to still look the same to play possession and position. Nothing different. So if you're Coach Andrew Douglas, you coach, obviously you yeah. coach uh, here in New Orleans. Uh, you're down 33 points. What, do you, what is your goal for the next 10 minutes? Yeah. Well, you, you know, just work on your structure and work on, you know, moving to get you guys in, in rhythm today. It hasn't really happened for them. The realignment offensively hasn't been there. Um, it's a long season. I mean, you know, we've had some big runs. I mean, the 10's a good player, the 9's a good player, uh, the 11, Frazier. I mean, they've got the talent. They've, but Listen, they games like this happen. Yeah. I remember early in the season, the gold yeah. whipped Seattle, looking yeah. really bad, and they were up at, at one point, 20-something points, and they came back and won their second title. Anything yeah. can happen. And I know, I know Old Glory's going to be back oh, in the next race. They've got too much talent not to be. And once they bring in those front row players, they're going to be very, very difficult. Oh, my to goodness. Think about how different this game would be if the scrums <laughs> yes. simply went 50-50. Right. And that's what you're going to get with the guys that who aren't, aren't here right now for them. Well, I'm dying to see the beast in the MLR. I know that's a big, big move, not just for the old glory, but for the league itself to attract those kind of players. Uh, more curiosity is going on around the world. I talked to the Australians and the South Africans on the team, and they said last year when they got back, I mean, everyone was talking about, hey, how was it? Did you have fun? Is it competitive? And uh, the answer was yes, yes, yes to all three of those. Yeah. I mean, like we said, you get the beast here. You get Mikey Sassani Fiaghi, uh, Michelangelo, who's a, a high-level hooker. Uh, you know, and that's where they're having problems today is in the front row, uh, unfortunately. Well, for Nola Gold, you got to say it's been a, a very rewarding and very encouraging first game thus far. They've got their new venue. They've got some new faces on the roster, which have, have been really help, helping put on this show. Uh, they've picked up two yellow cards so far, which uh, probably will be the subject of some discussion with uh, the coaches afterwards. But look out. Cam we Nolan with the up. hat trick. Has he yeah, got it? Got That's it. his third try in the game. The two-time World Cup player is probably leading the league in scoring already. Yowzer. What were we talking about earlier? Rugby intuition. There were the quick response. You just saw another example of how that can go right there. That ball comes loose. There's no law in rugby pre preventing your opponent from picking it up and stabbing you in the chest with it. Gosh, yeah, that's what he did. Exactly, Ian. I mean, DC spoils the line out. It drops down to the uh, the hooker. Uh, he just didn't he didn't react quickly enough, and it just bounced. And Cam was quick enough to get on it. But look, that's the way this game has kind of gone for DC. There, they steal a line out. They spoil the line out. And the ball just bounces the other way. We saw Malcolm Mays try where the ball squirted out, and yeah, could have gone either way. Absolutely. You know, a couple of bounces here or there, and the momentum swings to a different game. And uh, that's why no one goes 16-0 in, in, in rugby. So Carl Myers kicking his seventh conversion. He's already one for one on the three-point kicks, but he's four for six in these conversions. Let's see if he can go five for seven. Looks better on his percentage. Uh, it won't really matter too much in the game outcome, but... Always good. You see J.P. Eloff in the background. J.P.'s with the, giving him some tips he's, on how he, to deal with the New Orleans wind. Yeah, he kicked, that's right, the last two years. He's the all-time franchise leading scorer. Yeah. Even despite injuries at both years, he's, he's still put up a number of points. Got that one. Uh, Just missed that one. That one. Yeah. That right. Gorgeous day out here for it, though, and this pristine new pitch. Uh, we talked a bit about the, the, the smallness of the uh, the narrow dry zones there. But gosh, what a beautiful pitch it is. And here we are, we're just a few miles from downtown New Orleans. Uh, it's early afternoon, the night awaits. It's gonna be a good time. Hey, by the way, this is a good time to thank the governor of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, uh, for allowing 
the goal to take over for baseball, to play in the stadium. Kyle France is the head of the Louisiana Stadium Exposition District. They believe in rugby, and they're the ones that pushed this to get through, and so many people involved with that. So I just want to give a bunch of thanks to those Stop folks and people like hey, Hillary Landry James, as well. James, when you pull into our new venue here, you see the Saints, New Orleans Saints football facility. You see the NBA Pelicans right there, and you see oh. Major League Rugby. Well, goal take, goal. well taken by Sean Riley. Great point, Ian. Oh. All three major sports right now here, in one, one, basically oh, within, I don't know, 200 yards of each other. They call it a complex, but it's pretty simple to me. Nola Gold Rugby <laughs> it's gonna be, it's is gonna, rolling. It's, All right, it's some big, there's some. Stay here. I have a feeling you've used that at least once before. No, that was fresh material. That's fresh. Yeah. You I came was, up with that good. I was, I was holding that one for you. No okay, good job. Final five minutes here. Yet again, the commentary uh, yeah. goes so, on and results is, is in a yellow card. third yellow card? Yeah, that's uh, Nicola, Nicola hit that, 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 that ruck pretty hard. Um, what a great I think player the rep he is, thought though, he hit, Yeah, he's got, I mean, he's got attitude. Player. He's got a lot of attitude. He's a tough, tough guy. Um, Chilean international, and I think I think the ref the ref thought he hit that. Yeah, yeah, oh, just that's okay. Well, that's, that's it's Lindsay. this one here. It's just. Gotta stay positive, fellas. We can't yeah, mate. I don't know. It's a little. I, I think that I think Kieran Hearn's in a, in a position, and then Nicola hits him in the back when he's really not in a position where he's really securing the football. Uh, yeah. See if Old Glory can get another yeah. score Matt here. Houston there. Matt Houston's a tough player, always has been. I would say Ref Rogan has been letting them play for the most part, but when yeah. he sees something he doesn't like, he is not yeah, shy with the yellow card. Yeah, this late in the game, he doesn't want anyone getting hurt. I thought it was a little marginal, but um, I, I can understand he's, you know, it's a safety first kind of uh, worry. Let it come now. That's cool. If you're going to deliberately knock it on, you're not going to go quickly, okay? You can't deliberately knock it on, okay? You we'll see the, the 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 job of the referee, not only laying down the law, but constantly explaining his decisions to the players. If you want the penalty, just tell me. So, cause if you Very well the taken, line, though. Look at the position yeah? they have now so for their line out. They can win this line out. Might be in business for another score here. In the dwindling minutes of our opening match, Old Gold up 46, Old Glory 8. And as we talked about earlier, boys, we've seen some definitely some flashes of greatness from Old Glory. Yeah. I think Glory will evade them today in the outcome of this game, but a lot of talent there, a lot of interesting players to be watching. And We've seen a, a flashes of greatness also from the TV crew. You can see the difference with one year experience. I'm going to tell you this, the camera angles, the shots Walter Patty's given us, the creativity of Tim Fangai and the rest of the group. But this has been a great broadcast I mean, for the first game out. And obviously the second year, some of these folks have been doing it on a regular basis. Yeah, well, rugby that, is new for a lot of people, in, 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 including the, the, the infrastructure that makes this all work and delivers it to you. So it, it's been exciting to see it all come together. And it's exciting, Scott, to see the passion that people get from it right away after their first game. Listen, they love we, have, it. we have a lot of people in suites right now, literally about five to six hundred. So if you count that with the crowd, we're talking like three thousand around that number. Uh, it's harder to look like you're full when you're in this big, big stadium you have here. But this crew right here, we have Donovan Canale, Travis Hose. Jared Jakey, Pat Harity, Chris Metter. I mentioned Dylan Charlotte earlier. Five. We'll get to some of the cameramen in a second, but they do the job and they do it so Six. well. Six. Okay, it's gold scrum after that exchange. Their favorite place to be in this game, I would say. Booting it away. And it's a little bit of distance on it there. But still puts Old Glory in a spot where they can make some, make some things happen here as the clock ticks down to just about two minutes and change. Yeah, Old Glory's put some players in. Uh, this hooker, uh, Dante Lapresti, he's a local kid. That's what you like to see is some of the yes. local uh, local DC uh, rugby players. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. DC has such a rich rugby history. I played, up, I played up there for a year myself, so very, very good. And uh, great college rugby up there, Gonzaga High School, where Dante yep. went to is yep. one of the top high school programs. That's just beautiful stuff. Yeah, that's, there, that's, there we that's go. We got a little action here. Yeah. 22 getting after it. That is, of course, fabulous Dabulous. Mike Dabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Another Penn State guy, as Another we were talking Penn about earlier. Another Penn right? There's three at least in this game. Oh, one oh, for oh, one oh, for oh, the gold, oh, two oh, for oh, Old Glory. By the way, I lived in Washington, D.C. for four years right out of college. 
Oh, Still one of my top two or three cities right. in the world. I love that place. Of course, we're next to Virginia, prime rugby territory there. Absolutely. Those schools. Uh, I think we're going to get another card here. I think New Orleans is going to be playing 13 men for the last minute. But you see, like, the ball skills that DC had on that last that last play was great. Here we go so again. Fun. There you go. There you go. What a play. Another kick pass for the score. Old Glory gets something to build on for next week. You always want to have a little bit of momentum. There's some yeah. two nice plays from their highlight reel, that's for sure. And that was a beauty. You saw them just waiting right there for it very patiently in great position and able to capitalize untouched that last try. But you could see the, the play before that when they moved the ball wide. You could see the skill level they have. They just haven't been able to put it through. Yeah, that's uh, Dylan Ticato Simpson played for uh, Glendale last year. You probably remember him. Accomplished veteran. He can right. play a number of positions. Yeah. He's going to be versatile for this team. You know, look, you know, Robbie Coleman's got a mark three guy. It's a great play. Um, but it, it, they had a good, good sequence of ball there where they moved the ball. They came out the back with the, uh, with the ball and they made some, yeah, some, some that meters. They're going to be dangerous. When they get everything clicking, they're going to be dangerous. You know, they're, you know, they haven't been practicing that together that long. Yeah, we. Listen, right. when you got your big guys out, yeah. it's, it's tough. I mean, it? it sets the, 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 the engine. You know, as Ian knows, that the big boys are the engine, and, and these guys are good. They're going to be good. Hey, well, let you, me give some love to my cameras real quick, because these guys up there in the lifts, they're up there 30, 40 feet high. Yeah, Ron cool. Kennedy, Sam Englehart, Nathan Lawrence, and Josh right, Smith, and, of course, his beautiful wife, Christy Smith, my girl back here, Akeem Brown, and Peter Marshall. We thank you all for the job you do for us. There's Josh, I see. I remember old Josh. Look at him. Great he's day. He's so, my TV show. So the, the way, even though the the hooter has gone off or the horn's gone off, he still played because DC scored while there was still time on the clock. So the game continues on. So yeah, DC is going to probably sh throw this ball around, see what they can catch. If they can. I'm just happy they got a little momentum at the end of the match because listen, it was demoralizing. And when you're in the double digits and you score at the end, you can have something to build right. on. Absolutely right. Their backs are good. Their and the backs, way this their backs are, are, are very skilled. I mean, we talked about the beginning of the game. They had to win their set piece and they had to win the middle of the field, and they just didn't do that. And that will do it. I'm impressed by the way that uh, Old Glory scored for the, for the scores that they did get. Yeah. Uh, it, it was that good, it was that patient combination of arms. It was setting people up in just the right way and, and, and making something happen with it. But uh, of course, the day goes to the to the hosts to Nola Gold. They got exactly what they wanted out of this day. Uh, a 1-0 start for their season and. Boy, this place used to be known for their fireworks at baseball games. We saw some fireworks out there today. Hey, we're going to have some post-game thoughts coming back. We're going to talk about some of the great players. There's seven tries in this game for the gold. Hey, you only need four for the bonus point. Hey, we're going to be right back right here on Cox Sports Television. Stay tuned. NOLA Gold Rugby on Cox Sports Television is brought to you by Tulane Institute of Sports Medicine, the official health care provider of the NOLA Gold. By Boomtown, the official hotel and casino of the NOLA Gold. And by Cox, true fans watch together, celebrate together, and sometimes even witness history together. Cox gets you closer to the teams you love. Cox, bringing us closer. And here's the final score brought to you by Tulane Institute of Sports Medicine. I know the gold field very happy and privileged that they are part of their team now. And also, hey, guys, let's put thoughts at the end. Ian McNulty, what do you think about this first match of the season? You know Nola Gold was disappointed by the way last season ended. They were dominant for so long and sputtered at the end. They have to be really excited by the way they started here. Jeff, the experienced player and coach you are, you've been around playing this game for a few decades now. What was your take on the game? Yeah, the new, uh, the new acquisitions. I mean, Julian Dominguez speaks for <laughs> today, speaks I'll for itself. So. And then Robbie Coleman as well, and Carl Meyer with some big, big runs. I mean, we know he's got a big boot, but he made some massively big runs to set up a quick ball for uh, the outside backs. Um, Julian Dominguez is, is, is very, very impressive. And by the way, if you're watching this on Sunday night, get back out here next Sunday night at 5 o'clock. The Gold will play the Atlanta Rugby ATL. So it's going to be a big, big weekend next week. It's a later start at 5. But what a game here by the NOLA Gold. They win this one 46 to 13. And like you said, the newcomers all play great. It was a big man special today. Cam Dolan with three tries. Moni. Uh, Tonga Wee with a couple his way. Thanks for joining us for NOLA Gold Rugby on Cox Sports Television. For Jeff Ormsby and Ian McNulty, I'm Scott Alexander with the final score, 46-13.